With leaks and rumors that we might be getting the entire Erdrick trilogy instead of just a Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake, I feel like we should take a look back at Dragon Quest 2 and its remakes in order to figure out how we could improve upon it and make it more suitable for a modern release. Thank you guys so much for all your love and support and getting me to 2,000 subscribers. If you enjoy Dragon Quest, JRPG, and retro gaming content, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all. Now let's begin. Even if you happen to be a massive fan of Dragon Quest 2, you can't deny that this is one of the least accessible games in the beloved franchise. So what can we do to fix it for an HD2D release on modern hardware? Well, the first issue you'll come across when playing Dragon Quest 2 in all versions is something that'll plague you even more once you've acquired the ship. A lack of knowing where to go. At the start of the game, it isn't so bad because there's only a few directions you can head in and eventually you'll find your way to Leftwin, then the Kingdom of Kanek where your first party member, the Prince of Kanek, should be. Once you reach the Kingdom of Kanek, you're sent to the Wellspring of the Hero because that's where you're told he went, but he's not there either and you end up playing a bit of a chasing game going from town to town looking for him. This generally doesn't take too long to eventually find him, but this segment, along with a lot of other parts of the game, might make new players to the series frustrated and confused. How do we fix this inherent lack of direction the game has a lot of times? Well, they could add in pink exclamation marks on the map, showing you your next possible locations that you need to visit, similar to Dragon Quest XI. This way, players would always know where their next objective lies, and they wouldn't have to waste so much time wandering around lost just trying to progress the game. Once you've obtained the ship later in the game, this would be incredibly helpful. By putting the locations of all the steps needed to reach each sigil on the world map, as well as who you need to talk to in order for the sunken treasure to appear. Or better yet, no need to even talk to the guy in Tanticle Castle to make the sunken treasure appear. Just have it appear as soon as you obtain the ship, allowing for better NPC dialogue in each town, and reducing the busy work of running back and forth. Ra's mirror should also be marked, or at least the general idea of where it's located once you've spoken to the dog and the king's ghost in Moonbrook. For those of you old heads who feel this might break immersion, because it can definitely be enjoyable having to talk to all the townspeople in order to make the world feel more alive and feel like you've accomplished something by tracking down your next objective, well, even the NES version of the game came with maps showing the locations of most of the keys and sigils required to progress the story. It didn't hurt the game then, and it didn't hurt Dragon Quest XI either. And that game was a freaking masterpiece. So now that we've tackled Dragon Quest II's biggest issue and its lack of direction, what else should be improved? Well, next I would look at improving the Prince of Kanek a little bit more. These aren't created characters like the hero from Dragon Quest I or the party in Dragon Quest III, so they could give the prince and princess their own character with party chat dialogue, likes, dislikes, and personalities. On top of that, they could add some side quests as you explore the world, giving us more insight into both the Prince of Kanek and Princess of Moonbrook. Possibly give the prince a side quest later on where he must develop newfound bravery in order to help someone dear to him that we've met on our journey, and giving him access to a wider range of offensive spells. With the chance for purple exclamation point mark side quests, we could make the world of Torland feel much more alive and lived in. Change up or enhance some of the NPC dialogue, and allow us to get to know the townspeople a bit better than in previous versions of the game. Something I've always loved about the Dragon Quest series is its victory lap, and Dragon Quest 2 had one of the best early tours in the franchise. Giving the NPC characters more purpose would make the game's victory tour even better. Before the victory lap is of course the treacherous Renderak and Cave to Renderak. What would I change here? Well, surprisingly not much. The Cave to Roan or Renderak is so notorious for being difficult back in the day that I feel like it's an iconic piece of the game's identity. Instead of making the cave easier, I would instead add a small chapel about halfway through the cave, allowing you to save and heal, so that you're safe to mess up and fail without getting punished too harshly. This would make it so you could actually get through the cavern without staring at a map the entire time, which would keep the challenge, but not drive anyone to rage quit. It's just much more enjoyable not having to use a guide. The only other things I would probably update is adding the bag to your inventory, so if your character's inventory slots are full, you can still pick up stuff without having to drop something or leave a dungeon and take stuff to the bank. And I would like Hargon's generals to maybe make an appearance here and there in earlier parts of the story, or at least have some of the villains you fight along the way make reference to them. It always felt a bit dry running into them at the very end of the game, fighting them without ever really knowing who they are. So there you have it. This is how I would update Dragon Quest 2 for its HG2D remake. What about you guys? What changes would you make to the game so it could be more accessible to modern gamers? And what would you absolutely leave the same? If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all. You can also check out my other Dragon Quest videos, top 10 videos, and be sure to check out my Dragon Quest vs. Final Fantasy videos. Until next time, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.